Good morning, good morning, God bless you, my brothers and sisters, oh, magnify the Lord me, let's exalt his name together, for this is another day he has extended grace and mercy towards you and I, and that's enough to give him praise. The word of God said we shall bless the Lord all time, his praises shall continue to be in my mouth and your mouth. The word of God said when praises goes up, my brothers and sisters, blessings come down. And I just want to thank God for you, you, and you. But join it now and later as we worship God in spirit and truth through by the word of God on today. And I pray you've been as excited and as grateful as I am for the new day that God allowed you and I to enter into. And whatever he's doing in this season and this day, it should be a petition for us, God, not to do it without us that he be magnified and glorified. My brothers and sisters, I just give God all the glory and praise to the great Jehovah God that never sleep nor slumber the presence of the Holy Spirit that embody each and every one of us believers. And also Jesus in heaven still interceding for you and I on the right hand of the Father that where we are seated in heavenly places with him because of the indwelling Holy Spirit that embodies you and I. I pray, my brothers and sisters, you're as excited as I am for the word of God today. Now, this is a dangerous individual. This is a dangerous individual. Uh, we become from Proverbs, the sixth chapter, verses 12 through 19 on today. And we're going to touch and agree and believe God and pray to do only what God does. He said his word should go forth and shall not come back void. It should do what he sent to accomplish in the lives of his people. And not only that, the word of God is the food for our inner man of the dwelling Holy Spirit of the greater he that's in you and I, the he that's in the world. We are in the world, but not of the world, but we have the Holy Spirit of God embodying us that we may be to live a life um, pleasing to God because of the Holy Spirit that's from the heavenlies, from the Father that embodies you and I to empower us to lead to God that's in a plain path of righteousness and the truth of God's words that still sanctifies, consecrates, and set us apart for his glory, honor, praise and here in the earth. So my brothers and sisters, we're going to touch and agree. We're going to get right into the word of God on today and see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to you and I. And we're going to give him glory, and praise, and honor, and thank him even now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come to you as a yielded vessel to you. Thank you for being our heavenly Father that never sleep nor slumber. Thank you for being an all-knowing sin everywhere at the same time, God. Thank you, God, promised us to your word that even sometimes we don't even know. We don't even know ourselves, Father God, what we should pray for. But you said the Holy Spirit will be uttered within us. So we are coming to you now, God. First of all, first of all, just to tell you thank you. Thank you for your grace, your mercy you bestowed upon us. You each and every one of us, a new day, not only a new day, God, we thank you for the word of God, the anointing of God that destroys everybody in you and the people of God. And we thank you for the indwelling Holy Spirit, you said, will teach us all things and bring all things back to our remembrance. So we thank you, God, even now. Father God, we ask you, you said, what's some of the desire we pray, believe we should receive. We believe it even now, Lord God, that you will anoint our ear gates. We have ears to hear eyes to see and a mouth to worship you in spirit and truth for your word on today that's food for our inner man of the Holy Spirit that we too may go forth Father God walking in the spirit of truth you said your word is on that until our feet and a light into our path and when we don't know which way to go and which way to turn God you promise we need to forever just forever trust you with all our hearts and lean not to our own understanding and all our ways you said be acknowledged and direct our path so direct the leading God is for the keepers we by your indwelling Holy Spirit, so we give you honor, glory, and praise even now. In Jesus Christ's name, amen and amen. My brothers and sisters, now this is a dangerous individual. <laughs> Proverbs 6, chapter beginning to 12, verse to the 19th verse. The word of God said, A naughty person, a wicked man, walking with a forward mouth. He winked with his eyes. He speaketh with his feet. He teaches with his fingers. Forwardness is in his heart. He devises mischief continually, he saw of discord. Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. Suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. These six things that the Lord hate, yea, seven are abomination unto him. A proud look, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood, and heart that devises wicked imaginations, feet that be swift to and run into mischief. Also a false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among his brethren. My brothers, says, now this is a dangerous individual. We see the book of Proverbs, the book of wisdom. We see Song of Solomon, how even through the word of God on today, we're going to be dealing mainly with, um, now this is a dangerous individual, whether it's man, woman, boy, or girl, because of their character 
um, that they portray here in the earth. But we're going to see now how that we're dealing with a naughty, a naughty person, a naughty man, a na wicked man. Not only that, that he walking. But we see here, um, I want to share the word of God so I buy the temple of the Holy Spirit. They that destroy the temple, he will destroy himself. And realize and that's how we're many members of one body. See, we see ourselves in many members of one body as bodies of believers in Christ. But then we need to see ourselves being a body of men and members that we need for the natural body to operate here in the earth. And we know how it is on today uh, when we are liking any body parts. A lot of times they may some kind of be some kind of consider some kind of deformity, or they may say some kind of handicap, or sometimes through violent wars or violence or crime, or even during birth, we could have been born without some parts or not fully functioning to the capacity that they should be. We know today we have individuals that um, even due to technology that they may have been born or even um, I'm like myself. I've had, had surgeries and I've had, um, I would say even um, surgeries, but I've had bone structure put in my body and God has allowed me because of the bone of someone else's body. You know how it is today? We have organ donors. But we see here that today the only um, internal organ we're talking about today is the heart. But we know the heart to the body is just like the engine to a vehicle. Without it, <laughs> it's worth nothing. So we see here today, uh, with us comparing, dealing with, as we have read through the scriptures, we've been dealing with how he was sharing with the parts of the body, how that they are to be affected here in the earth, but they're to be used um, to bring glory unto God. They're not to be used in an evil and a wicked way as we see. Now, as we go through the word of God and we're going to examine ourselves, we're going to look at the mirror of the word of God at ourselves. Because the word of God tells us there is none righteous, no, not one. And we was born with these works of the flesh that mean that everything that we mention here today through the word of God dealing with our hearts, our hands, our eyes, um, even when we walk, even with our feet, <laughs> even, even in our mind, we're going to see that we ourselves, unless we're born again in the spirit of God, we have no control to cause it. Um, the body members to operate according to how the Holy Spirit had predestined them from the beginning. Because the word of God said, every, even he created and made a man. And he said everything he made was good. And he didn't become a living soul to what well, God breathed the breath of life in him. So now we see we don't only have the breath of natural life. We have the breath of spiritual life of the Holy Spirit. Because now we are now new creatures in Christ Jesus. So we see here, according to the word of God, dealing with this naughty person, this wicked Man is dealing with an individual. So we're going to take it personal. We're going to see ourselves in the word of God taking it personal because this is talking about an individual person as we should take it personal on today and see how that, how he walk, how we know how he's walking. We know you have to have legs, um, even feet to even to walk or even people that may not even have legs. What are they doing? They may use crutches or walkers. But we see here, he's saying how this naughty person, a wicked man, how he walk with a frolic mouth. With his mouth is speaking. Not only that, he's saying that not only that, he wicked his eyes and also how he's speaking with his feet. So we see here a, a man, an individual person that they're speaking not only with their mouth, but they're speaking even with their body. Even teaching with the finger. So we see here that even according to this, we are dealing with the man, how we see how he's walking with the frog mouth. We just deal with the walking first. We deal how he's walking with the frog mouth, even how he's speaking with his feet. You know how people say, um, you may not understand what I say or you may not know where I'm going, but watch me walk. Watch me. <laughs> so what I'm saying is some individuals, they're walking and they're putting in action to where they're going, but they're still speaking. Not only that, my brothers, we see here, how even in verse 18, how it says how even using feet that be swift to run into mischief, even running to be mischievous, to be even evil and be wicked. And this was said, now this is a dangerous individual. <laughs> Not only that, my brothers, we see here now when we're dealing with even with the mouth. You know the word of God tells us the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaking. And not only that, only speaking, but then it tells us how that even how in verse 14, how sore discord, brain, this confusion, division 
amongst individuals because of what they speak. So we know we sow it. You know the word of God said, Be not mocked, what a man sow, thou shalt also reap. What we sow to the flesh, we shall reap the flesh. What we sow to the spirit, we shall reap the spirit. So it's the same thing with our words. It's life and death in the power of the tongue. But also we can bring life to a situation, we can bring death. But we see here, sowing discord. And we know that should not be as us of the leader, not only when we're dealing with the mouth and dealing with um, a forward mouth and storm and discord, but we see also in verse 17. Verse 17 deals with a lying tongue. The word of God said, a lion should not tear in sight. And if anyone said that they have no sin, they're lying. The truth is not in them. Because the word of God tells us that all the sin is shown for the glory of God and for the way to sin is still death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. So also we will conceive that mother's sin and also do the degeneration of curses from Adam um, and even the beginning of time for sin, but we thank God for allowing Jesus to have been made a curse of you and I that when we believe in the gospel, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we are no longer under the curse. Even we say he did not come to do away with why he came to fulfill it. So now that you and I are new Christian in Christ Jesus, or we used to be like I tell you, you've been delivered from a lying spirit. So we see some things are lying spirits and some things are works of the flesh that we continue in, that we don't have to continue. But we see here, not only give the mouth out, sowing discord and a lying tongue, but also we see sowing discord among the brethren. Also, that means we see brethren, we are talking about believers. So it's enough when we see verses 12 through 15, we can see ourselves as how we were born with that nature even before salvation. But now, when we see he's dealing with um, verses 16 through 19, and how he's talking about six things that the Lord hate, and the seventh is abomination, meaning it's disgust, it's disgrace, it's hatred before God. He doesn't hate man, because he said, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whose belief should not perish, for he sent him to the world not to condemn the world, but the world through it may be saved. So he's talking about people in the world. So we see here that even how it tells us also in verse 19, talking about a false witness. You know how there's a false witness to whatever, even not being truth, even how it said in verse 19, speak it lies, and then saw a discord among the brethren. It should not be so since we are now new creatures in Christ Jesus. But we see here, not only we dealt with the mouth, we dealt with the um, feet, and we also dealt with the tongue. And also, my brothers, we see here, we need to deal with our mind. We need to pray. I pray to and ask God. I know I need help in my mind and my thinking sometimes. I ask God, let that mind be in me, which is also in Christ Jesus, the will of the will of the Father. Um, Jesus said he did what the Father said do. He went where he said go. He said what he said said. And that's why I'm believing God for me and pray you believing that for you. That, that now that we're new creatures in Christ Jesus, that we don't have to allow our mind to dominate us now that we've been saved by the power of the Holy Spirit of God to make us whole soul, body, and spirit. But we see it, my brothers, according to the word of God, we're dealing with the mind. We see here how that in verse 14 it says he devises mischief continually. So when a, a person devising mischief continually, meaning that when we're devising something, we're thinking about it, we got in the mind, you know how it is. What can I do next? What I can I say? You know how it is um, when um, the word of God tells us, therefore there's no condemnation of those in Christ Jesus. Every tongue that should rise up against us, we can um, to condemn us. We can speak to it because that's an inheritance of those that love the law and the rights of God. We can condemn those things that try to speak and condemn us through by the word of God. But we see here how the vast and mischief in the imagination continually. And, it, and and I mean, and you know how it is before salvation, you know now that we're saved, we still have to. And that's why, like I said in verse 18, when I was saying how even our heart, oh glory be to God, how it's that even here, it's in our heart that divides the wicked imagination. That's why sometimes what we have to do, when we have to pull down the strongholds, and imagine thoughts in our minds are trying to exalt above the knowledge of God where it is true and where we want to be disobedient because what we got in our minds, what we are thinking in our imagination, in order to overcome being disobedience, we need to speak the truth of God word that caused us to align up our mind to the word of God to walk into obedience. And that's how we overcome disobedience by walking in obedience. And that's why we like, we have the power and authority to cast out the mind thoughts from our mind. We can pull it down. Do by what? The word of God. He said his word is quick and powerful and sharp to enter into a soul, person, even divine asunder, soul and spirit, joy and mind, desire and thoughts and tests of the hearts of mankind. Because we see here in verse 18, he said, and a heart that divides a wicked imagination. The word of God tells us our hearts are deceived of all things. Uh, who can know it but God? 
our hearts are not only evil, it's wicked, it's hard-hearted, if we can have trouble hearts, and when God saw on the pure in heart, you'll see God. So we know if our hearts are not pure, our hearts cannot be remain and be devising wicked imagination. Because guess what? That's why we need to hide the word of God in our heart. It's the storage, it's the uh it's the, the memory bank. That we need to put the word of God so the time we the Holy Spirit can bring it back to our members. Because we see here, my brother, let's think about the body. The word of God said, um, his word is a lamp unto our feet and light unto our pathway. So my brother says, we want to overcome walking these with our fraud mouth. And mouths and saying things that's not pure, just, and holy, and honest of good report. Those things that bring glory to God. Those things that edify us as a believer or other believers. Um, we need to what? We need to revisit the word of God and listen, especially those of us that are born into the spirit. So we see in verses 12 through 15, I was saying to myself, this is how that we see that even it's going to be utterly destruction. And it means that, yes, we can be saved and operating just like this. I don't know about you. Even I got saved, got back in church, even doing ministry. The Lord had to help me sometime not to want to be not a naughty person, wicked man. I've been confessing. Lord said, when we commit these sins, he said, if we confess our sins, he's faithful just forgive us of our sins and that cleanse us of all of our I'm saying, now this is a dangerous individual. We are dangerous. We are dangerous without the power of the Holy Spirit. And we're dangerous not only to ourselves, but to others. And what happened is, what we're doing, we'll destroy, we can self-destruct our own self. Not only self-destruct our own self, we destroy other people because you look at him. When we have false witness, when we run to shed innocent blood, and when we lie, and I tell you the truth, and then we would our fraud them out, I tell you, we can kill. Sometimes people say that um, verbal abuse is more damaging to an individual than physical abuse. <laughs> Both of them are damaging. But let's think about it. And that's why we need to pray and believe God. Let that mind be in us, which is also in Christ Jesus. Because we see here that now after salvation, especially when we see in verse 19, it says, A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that sought discord among his brother. Oh, glory is enough that we are, in the first verse, is that we be a naughty person, a wicked man, or a woman, boy, or girl. And then we're doing things to ourselves and to others. But then as believers, now we can come now corrupting our brothers and sisters. Because what? Now we'll bring up discord. The word of God said, keep peace as much as possible with all men. And that's what we are to be. To keep peace as possible with all men. No matter what. We should be about uh, reconciling our brothers and sisters back to, to the a right relationship with God. Because what happened is, we not only destroy our own self. We destroy our, our fellowship with God. And not only that. Even with each other, because we have many members of one body. So we have many members as one body as being an individual in our own physical body. Then we have many members of one body and the spirit with our brothers and sisters. And not only that, we are now as born again believers, our sons and daughters of the, uh, in the family of God. He said those who are led by the spirit of God are the sons and daughters of God. And so we see here, um, I was trying to think, Lord, how you want to do this? But he just want me to examine myself and then encourage you. That just because the word of God tells us, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Behold, old things have passed away. All things become anew. He is saying to us on today that this should not be so. We should not have the character of acting out like this, even if we acted out like this as before we became a believer. We shouldn't have been doing it in the first place because we still, and believe it or not, even sometimes they said, man, even before I wasn't saved, even if I was a believer, I wasn't evil and wicked. I was a nice person. I was a good person. But nice and good don't get us in because when we reject that God's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we still sin it because the, the, by being empowered by the Holy Spirit of God will give us the boldness that if we may not have the character and personality of walk, operating like this, that we should have the boldness and the love for another individual that we will encourage them that that's not nice, that's not of God. Because we see it in um, Proverbs 6.15, it says, Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly. And suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. Men that have continued in sin and been evil and wicked and using our members of our body for things that are not a righteousness. <laughs> God said, Holy Spirit, thou shall no man see God. And he said, they that sick and thirsty, after the righteous shall be filled. So we know, looking at the word of God, none of this is operating in the righteousness of God. It's contrary to what God is telling us how we should live. Um, 
before even before salvation or after salvation, we're still under accountability to God. Yes, he said, Who's my son, who's my brothers, who's my sister? Jesus saying, um, who's my mother, but those that do the will of my father. So we know that this is not of God because now and I guess I I know I'm not the only one gift is charged, but even after being saved, I was acting someone just like this. I said, Lord have mercy. So what I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, when we see what God's saying is worth what he hates, it's an abomination to him. It's a disgrace. I mean, and a loving God is God is just outright telling us when we don't walk in the wisdom and the commands of God's word, and some of them may not be the commands, but the principles of God's word, it works for us, it's what we need. Because we are not going to enter into the kingdom of God acting like this, living like this, even being saved. Some people say, yes, we can be a saved, or not to speak in a tongue, and use our spiritual gifts. It's our gifts are called our repentance. But we can still be acting just like this because we need to crucify our flesh. And this is why um, I'm going to share, because the word of God tells us, that the natural man cannot understand things of the spirit because they spiritually desire their foolish and neither can he know them. And so what I'm saying is, that's why we got to be born again of the spirit. He said what's born of flesh is born of flesh, what's born of the spirit is born of spirit. We must be born of the water and of the spirit. If we're not born of the spirit, we can't even see the kingdom of God. If we're not born of the water, answer, we won't even enter into the kingdom of God. And so my brothers and sisters, our baptism gives us an enrollment into the book of life. And also our salvation um, caused us to be able to enter into the kingdom of God. But with us continuing to commit these sins after salvation, God's going to chastise those that he loves. So a lot of the chastising you and I get today is not so much because of Satan, the demons, and devils, and witches, and warlock. It's because I will walk in disobedience according to the word of God. We being evil, we being wicked, we got fraud with mouth, we send all kind of nasty, filthy words out of mouth. Even some people blaspheme the name of God, cursing God, using his name in vain. <laughs> not only that, disobeying the word of God and then we're causing discord we're being a busy body and other people busy running our mouth, my mama told me I run my mouth too much and she ain't here today and sometimes I started running my mouth I said, Lord God, mama tell me, daddy tell me even my father told me one time when I was head surgery you can't see the hospital and he just, he was, nobody gave him a report how I was doing, he was waiting to get a call but he couldn't handle it, he didn't want to come to the hospital because I was having surgery, but he hadn't heard nothing from nobody and then he comes in the room and he sees me, I'm sitting up talking after surgery like this and the only thing, he's, he was glad I was talking, but when he came in the room and saw I was doing fine and talking like I'm talking now, the only thing he told me, you need to shut your mouth <laughs> but look, he was glad I was talking, he was glad I was still alive but what I'm saying is this my brother and sister that we need to see it. But when we're talking the right thing, God tells us, declare his word in and out of season. We need to be a witness here in the earth. So what I'm saying is for a good reason. It's not that it was a bad reason. I just love to talk. But now I'm realizing I need to use it more for um, declaring the gospel by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That we don't get in trouble with this fraud. My feet got running in the eyes. I mean even. I did even talking the eyes winking. You know last time people may tell you something or telling somebody something and you know they lying and they know they're lying or they're not telling all the truth. It's still a lie. Half truth or no truth is still a lie. No white lie, black lie is a lie. So what I'm saying is you know how sometimes people be winking at people and sometimes it's to say I'm saying this but you know and I know it ain't all the truth. So they saying, don't you say that. Now, sometimes people wink the eye because they lust not the people. And sometimes it could be some kind of code. So for whatever reason, but what I'm saying is this, my brother and sister, is that um, it's still not a good thing. <laughs> so you see here the body parts, the eyes, the tongue, the mouth, the heart, the feet, the hands. Even when he was saying how he would use the fingers, just like the hands. What? The hands it also... How he was using our hands, but also to what? Shed innocent blood, being violent, being vicious, of war and abuse. Um, not only that, but using the fingers to instruct. So we see here, this here, we he say in verse 13, he said, even he speaking with his feet, he teaches with his fingers. Throw this in his heart. So we know the way he's teaching is not a morally or a righteousness of a good thing. So what I'm saying, I know at the time I um, tried to take, uh, I took sign language for uh, 
a period of time. I did not pursue it, but then when I did learn and taking sign language that depend on the culture and the language and the word, that um, you have to be careful because you could be signing um, for some cultures, it means one thing in your culture and another thing in another culture. So what I'm saying is, with the teaching that they're doing, people of the evil and wickedness, they understand their language, just like us. We were born being evil and wicked and sinful. That's why I'm going to share with you that when we're looking at now, this is a dangerous individual, a man, woman, boy, or girl. So we can see from what's going on. A lot of times the word of God is to, word of God is to try to speak by the spirit and see what's God. And then we want to have the gift of designer of spirits. And it's not on design of the spirits, but design of the flesh. So when we're designing the spirits, we know whether it's the spirit of God or not the spirit of God. When we design the work of the flesh, we know is it of the spirit of God or is it of the flesh. Now we see here, my brothers, when we deal with, um, I want to go to Galatians. Galatians 5, 19 to 26. I'm going to deal with the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. And the reason why I'm going to share the scripture with you is because that from what we're seeing in Proverbs, um, the 6th chapter, verses 12 through 19. We know that in the work of these works of the flesh, it's not exhausted. There's other works of the flesh other than this. But I'm going to share this with you in the field of the Spirit. We see that when I read these works of the flesh, these works of the flesh will cause us to act out. It will cause us to walk with a frolic mouth. It will cause us um, to wink our eyes and um, speak with our feet. Go on places we shouldn't go, but saying, well, you see where I'm going? That's some people like, well, I'll see you there. Um, we're not going to talk, but you just follow me. I'm walking, so you know I'm speaking. I'm here, now follow me. So we see it now, and what happens is sometimes we dig a hole for our own self and for who has followed us as well, or they digging a hole for themselves because we follow them. So we can be the leader of the follower, but if we go in the wrong direction, my brothers and sisters, we got to realize there's a narrow gate, this great gate, the narrow way that leads to eternal life, and there's a what a broad, wide gate, this broad way to lead to eternal destruction and hell and damnation. We can choose this day which way we want to go. And I tell you, Proverbs, the book of wisdom for you and I, that if our personality and our character is not aligned with the word of God, we got time now. You and I, he allowed you and I to enter a new day. And like I said, the advantage that I confess up, I'll be the first one to say, I'm like Apostle Paul, the chief is in the worst of sinners. Sin, sin is sin in the eyesight of God. And that I just thank God for his grace and mercy he extended before you and I to give us another day. Like he told, like the told Hezekiah, get your house in order. And then he asked, turn to the wall. He will ask for 15 more years. But I'm talking about, Lord, we need to get our house in order today because it's not promised that we're going to get 15 more years. But even if we got 15 more years or 20, 30, 40 more years, we still need to make sure our house is in order because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And that we are um, having this characteristics in our and our lives, especially as believers or unbelievers, we got chance to get it right. So we see here, Galatians the fifth chapter, verses 19, 19 through 21 said, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, various emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelries, as such like of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. So my brothers and sisters, we know here, we look at Proverbs, and we look at these works of the flesh, these works of the flesh will cause us to act out like this. We always looking with our eyes. <laughs> We always got something to say out our mouth. I didn't get this charge. Not only that, all and proud look. Like you're saying, even with dealing with the eyes, how it's saying how even how proud look. You know how sometimes we look all arrogant and pious and just as simple and wretched undone? And the and the and the eyes is the gateway into the soul of man. That's why lots of times individuals don't like individuals don't like to be stared at in the eyes. They don't look at you. That's why people tell you, even they do um certain lie detective tests. And even though they got these um, little um, wires put to you, and they ask you questions, and they zigzag or whatever, whatever, and um, they see people's eyes blinking too or whatever. But what I'm saying, even when we talk to individuals, a lot of times individuals can't look straight in the eye of an individual. Now, I'm not saying because everyone don't that they're lying and not telling the truth now. Um, even myself, just on this note, how that sometimes um, with my eyes, um, I don't blink them enough. I don't blink them enough, and then my eyes start being dried out and running. So a lot of times, I don't notice that, that, that I'm not blinking enough. I'm so busy, I want to keep focus on what I'm reading, because I love to read. So I'll sit there and read and not realize that I don't blink my eyes. So now I'm trying to get in the habit 
to continue to blink my eyes enough where they have to stay don't be dry eyes. And I didn't realize that being diagnosed with dry eyes, and I think out the healing that they run. I'm like, well, but what sense that make? You got dry eyes that's still running. Because the um, the tear ducts are not flowing like they should. So what I'm saying here, our eyes say a lot. It's the gateway and the light into us as an individual. But um, also, let's not judge people. Some people may have issues with their eyes as well. So um, whatever the situation is, some people ain't got eyes, but they still here and living. Some people are partially blind. Some people are blind and can't see. And they more opera and I... And I, it just touches my heart when the deacons at my home church, he passed, and I've been knowing him for years, and he was a, when I met him, he was blind, and I tell you, he was a man of great faith, um, went through his various surgeries, um, but I, I miss him dearly, he was a great inspiration, he would come to Bible study, he would come to Sunday school, he'd be in worship services, and nice uh, young man. And even in, up until his time to depart from this earthly realm, he passed a couple of days ago, and um he was a great faith, and, and he had, to me, he had more greater faith than me at times, and um, even the faith of others were, that even though, and he would braille, he would braille and study the word of God, and a lot of us today, we got our eyes, we got our ears, we got our, all our natural physical body parts and internal organs are operating 100%, or still operating, and um, we ourselves um, haven't put as much time as he and some other individuals that may have had some kind of illness or so some deformity or some um, physical ailments that they kept the faith. And that says a lot to us that can see and can walk and can talk and um, can take our place from step from place to place. And we are not using our members, our members of our body, our physical body to bring glory to God. We're using our mouth in the wrong way, our eyes in the wrong way, our feet, our tongue, even um, our witness. We're what? We're doing, even with our hands and even with our fingers, we're doing the wrong thing. Some of us are shooting too much, cutting too much, using our hands to battle and abuse individuals, even to abduct people. Not only that, and even to my hands that, that run to shed innocent blood, the violence and crime is, is on a rampage. Everything that's, yes, the word, what's happening in the word today is being fulfilled because of prophecy, but some of these things that are happening is because of disobedience to the word of God and most of all the rejection of the gospel and most of all not want to um, discontinue the things and the sinful life that we did of being evil and wicked and always having the last word and saying we want to say we want to say it like we um, greater than God and we above his word and that you know how to say we the know it all no one know it all uh, if we knew everything, we wouldn't need God. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning, everything beginning ends with Him. He's the all knowing, seeing everyone at the same time, God. And the only way we know what we know today is when it is because of Him revealing to us through by the power of the Holy Spirit, and God reveals it to us in His messages, um, He requires us to walk in obedience to His word. So we see here those works of the flesh in Galatians 19, 5, 19 to 22, 21. We see those are the works of the flesh. And will cause us to act, up, cause us to think all kind of things in our mind. Do this, why God said, if we don't want to retain Him in our knowledge, He will give us over to vile affection to do whatever we really want. So we reject. He's not going to make us obey His word. Um, it's living in freedom in Christ Jesus, but we want to receive the blessings of God and want our prayers answered. But we don't. Sometimes we don't want to obey. The word of God tells us, "Be this little better than sacrifice." So my brother and sister, now this is a dangerous individual. I'm saying that because a lot of times. We want to um, blame and other individuals why we're going through what we're going through. And majority of the time, it's probably because of our sin and disobedience. Because we are not obeying the command or the principle of God's word that leads us to a life of righteousness. Because he's now, we are um, the sons and daughters of God. We now should be living a life. Like they always saying, king, we are king kids. King kids of the king. Our Lord say Redeemer, Jesus Christ himself is coming back as king of kings. And Lord, he's coming back even as judge. But not only that, now that we've been adopted in the family of God, we got, um, we got to live according to the word of God. Um, whether we want to or not, we have to obey the word of God because we see here, now when we're talking about the fruit of the spirit, what we should be bearing, um, even myself. Some of them I'm still working on, um, but the Holy Spirit already has. Um, now that we're born, it's, it's not so much I'm working on. It's what I need to obey. Just do what the word of God says. Nothing I can do within my own self because the natural man can understand, can understand the spirit of the spirit is earned. But now that we're born in the spirit of God, we can't use the excuse, but I'm working on I'm trying. But now that we've been empowered by the Holy Spirit, just do it. 
<laughs> we just got to obey the Holy Spirit and stop walking in disobedience. When we don't obey the word of God, we're going to speak to God. We're just outright walking in disobedience. And we can't keep using excuses. Why I didn't do this and who did this and they said this. We got to walk in the eminence of God's word. Now Galatians 5.22 tells us, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are of Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another and ending one another. So we see here, now this is what the fruit of the Spirit should look like. Now the fruit of the Spirit don't look nothing like what I said here in Proverbs. But this here is just guidance for us to see the consequences of not walking in the wisdom of God's word, not walking in the fruit of the Spirit. But um, this is how, and these individuals, all this is a dangerous individual, we should not shun ourselves from an individual like that. Um, even ourselves, we should be seeking God for deliverance if we are living like this. But what we should do is, we should pray for individuals that are living a life like this. We should witness to them. If they're unbelievers, first of all, they need to be saved. They need to believe in the gospel because speaking this to them is just like the not. This is what, like I said, this is what we do. It ain't turn one cheek and let them smack the other side and, and all that. We're talking about now. We are born again believers. We can live a life without living like this. And the reason why I'm sharing that is because we're still sharing. Yes, we're talking about coming up on celebrating Pentecost. Yes, we're in remembrance. Um, yes, we're talking about preparing for the end. And, but guess what? If we don't get our houses in order, our temple, and our character still like this, my brothers and sisters, we're not going to survive in the end because we have to realize we're so, now I know, this, this is what I'm sharing in Proverbs. We cannot deny what's going on in the world that even no matter how obedient and righteous we live up before God, that we can be tempted. The word of God said, therefore there is no temptation common to man that he hasn't already given us a way to escape. Because we may not, our character may not be like what's um, menacing today in Proverbs. But we see here, even in, um, when we are dealing with the fruit of the Spirit, also how he's telling us we have the ability, even when we get tempted to act out, or if we're dealing with it now, we can crucify our own flesh. We can crucify our own flesh by repenting of sin, by um, obeying the word of God, even when we want to walk in sin. That's why we have the Holy Spirit, to convict us if we want to walk in sin. And to lead in God is to all truth. That's why we are born again of the Spirit of God. That's what the Spirit of truth is, the word of God. So what I'm saying is here is that he tells us in Galatians 5, 24, and he said, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. So he's saying that if we are in Christ, we have. Those are in Christ. He said there's no way to the Father except through by the Son, but he's the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. So when we believe in the God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And now we're born in the Spirit of God. Now it tells in verse 25, if we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Oh, we're walking. We're walking in the Spirit. That means we're being Spirit-led. We're going and saying what the Spirit tells us to do. So that means that we are being controlled by the Spirit. And not only that, he said, and let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, ending one another. So what we need to do is that even we see in Proverbs, if, if it's us that need to be delivered, we need to be delivered. But if we're dealing with individuals or things we may know of herbal individuals, we need to pray for them because we know that destruction is coming. We may not know the minute, second hour, but it's going to be so. What we see here, that we not, should not even be provoking anyone. We should not even be ending one another. Yes, it can make us want to end it them, and sometimes individuals are hated themselves. But God says, you love the Lord thy God, all in my heart, soul, strength, and love thy neighbors as self. And sometimes we don't have neighbors, whether it's in our community or in our cities or countries or we all realize that we are neighbors to somebody. <laughs> we're in the world. So we need to realize that let's not be angry. We can cause to be angry and envious of this wickedness and evilness. It, it can be so overwhelming that if we don't mind out, um, even myself, for uh, just a brief testimony, when I was, was looking at the um, TV and looking at the world news, and so I found myself one time just getting angry. 
because I just got worked up because they were abducting these children and killing them. I mean, hundreds and hundreds of them can't find them and, and abuse them and torture them. Even they had the missionaries that was overseas. I pray God, thank God. I know they went through a lot and they got delivered. So what I'm saying, not only am I, I had loved ones in my family to be shot down and killed and abused and things that went on. And, and then, this shows when we're true disciples of God. And then you got to love and forgive and Jesus and forgive them for them know what they're doing. And you're affected by this. But although we may be affected by it, that's where it comes with us realizing that, yes, we are human. We are natural beings. Yes, we have feelings. We have a will. We have emotions. But still, we have the power of the Holy Spirit of God because we can't take authority in our own hands. And that's what's happening today. Uh, we know how it is to be born and feel the Spirit of God. And we know... I know I'm the only one, I ain't guilty, the only one guilty. That sometimes from what we see in Proverbs, sometimes we want to what? Be quicker than run when I feel to share innocent blood. You don't kill my nephew, you don't kill my mama, my wife, my children. You know, I'm a Satan, I'm a believer. And then when you do do these things, it's kind of like, well, God, how can I overcome this? You see what I'm saying? And you think about God saying, well, I gave my only son for you. You may be like, Vince, you sound like a simple. No, it ain't just that simple because I know it is like, they have things that happen to loved ones, things that happen to my life, and I want to act out. Now, I used to act out, but now I got the Holy Spirit with them, and the Holy Spirit is telling me, well, you can't be acting like you've been acting. <laughs> and sometimes flesh like, you just got to say it. And I'm like, well, and the Holy Spirit don't allow me to say it, because like, now, and like the Word of God tells us, anything said, the tongue is a deadly ease and a poison. It said, it'll set the whole world on fire, Lord Jesus. But what I'm saying, when we got the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit can control our tongues. So the Holy Spirit can control our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our tongues, our heart, our hands, our feet, our thoughts, our mind, our imagination. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. And I thank God for the Holy Spirit because I tell you, my members sometimes, just like his, sometimes want to, to act out. And, you know, to say forward things, to be a naughty person, to be with... Because we're a fleshly being, but we don't have to be. That's why Apostle Paul said the flesh and spirit are constantly one against one another. But we don't have to have the flesh take over because we have the Holy Spirit that keep us under submission and authority of the Word of God. So not only that, my brothers, we see here um, how that in John 15, 26, 27 tells us, But when a comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeded from the Father, shall testify me, and ye also shall bear witness, because ye have been with me from the beginning. And we know even with Jesus' disciples, how they was with him, how he told them he was going to lead them, he was going to send back the comfort of the Holy Spirit, not the Holy Spirit, but the Spirit of truth. And that's why we need the Word of God. The Word of God is our food. The Word of God is what refuel us, is our ammunition, I would say. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We said, now this is a dangerous individual. And we are dangerous to ourselves, to others, and we are um, not only destroying ourselves and destroying others, but we're destroying our fellowship with God. Although we're saving believers, God, he hates sin. So it's not saying he hates the individual. He hates the sin that's operating through the individual. That's why he said, be in the world, not in the world. Because he said, for all of sin is shall fall and shall the word of God. For he knows we're sinners and we are rich and dumb who's conceived in sin. So if that were the case, he would he say, for he committed love to what we are sinners, that Christ died for you and I. Now this is a dangerous individual. Man, woman, boy, girl. So my brother and sister, when we see someone acting out like this, we know to pray for them. Let's not get angry. Let's not um, act out like they do unto others. We have them do unto us. Um, and then they don't do unto us the right things that we do unto them. We still to do what's right. And God said, individual know his disciples because what we we love them, love him, and we love him, we keep his commandment. So it means that I know like sometimes people say it's a hard pill to swallow. It's not a hard pill to swallow, it's just the word of God that is gonna equip us because and the reason why I'm sharing this is because we're gonna be tested, we're gonna be tried, and we're gonna be tempted the closer we get to the return of Christ. Because things is happening now. Like I told you, I got angry and worked up that day. And I, even with the shoes and the killing of the kids in school and the individuals and, and all that. And I had to pray. God said, watch as well as pray. And the third person, righteous man, veil of much. So we need to do, we need to remain in right relationship with God. Then we can pray and intercede for what's going on in the world today. We cannot pray against the will of God. God's will is going to be done. But at least pray that uh, for those souls that will be saved and want to be saved. 
And that's what Jesus did when he prayed in John 17 chapter. He prayed for himself. He prayed for his disciples, those that followers of him. And he prayed for the believers to come. But those that write out, everybody's not going to be saved because everybody's not going to believe the gospel. And we know that. But the key is, we still need to declare the word of God in and out of season because God knows and he holds around responsible. He said, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And um, whether an individual look like they ever changed or they've done so much cruel and evil and wickedness may seem like they never changed. That's not our business because an individual, a lot of times we didn't think we can change. A lot of times individual counts, I said, well, they ain't going to change. They ain't going to never be nothing. They, they just like the mom and daddy, they say no good. I mean, you know how even sometimes parents coming up and family members and friends and people, they, they count us out and say things. And even we start growing up in that same environment, start saying the same thing, speaking curses over people, belittling them because they're walking life. And guess what? Then when they do repent and say, God, use them in a great and mighty way. That's why I said first can be last and last first because guess what? A lot of us, we think we've arrived already and some of the individuals are direct, rejected and not witnessing to because we see them in a low state of life like there's no hope. But as long as we got breath in our bodies, there's hope in Christ Jesus. And that's what we need to be sharing with individuals because we know here, even we see in Acts the second chapter, verse 37 through 40, it says, Now when they had heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter, and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. That's what we need to do. We need to do like Peter told them when they heard they were preached word of God. He said they need to repent, be baptized for the remission of the sins. And that's what we need to do. He said to confess our sins. He's faith and just forgive us of our sins to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. We can't cleanse ourselves. God can't. Even David, he committed sin with Bathsheba, committed adultery, he committed murder. And, and um, even what? Guess what? Even had his servants, the other uh, soldiers, to even set up, set him up, right, to be killed. Even they was an accessory to murder, accessory to the word of God to be partake of no man's sin. So we may say we are not sin, but if we are agreeing and being quiet in the midst of an individual that's, that's speaking out, they're using their members of their body, whether the saved or unsaved, and we are the believer, we need to speak to this that that soul be not lost. Because we see here in verse uh, Proverbs 6, 15, it says, Therefore shall his calamity come suddenly, and suddenly shall he be broken without remedy. And this will be said, causing misfortune, even and adversity and afflictions that come upon them. And that's what's happening today. Some individuals think it's generational curses. They think somebody's going to bewitch them and put witchcraft on them. And, and all it is is because we are not obeying God's word. We are using our members of our bodies for the wrong reason. They cause sin to us, destruction to ourselves, destruction to others. And it causes us not to even enter the relationship with God. And we keep right on, we're going to be given over to a reprobate mind. And that's what's going to happen. You see, he said, we don't want to retain him in our knowledge. And that's why I like about I'm like, Lord, because I was thinking first, I'm like, Lord, how you want to handle this? And made me examine my own self. Revisiting. That's why we need to read. It's nothing wrong with repeat. And that's what's happening today. It's too many of us, including myself. If you don't read and study the word of God and let the Holy Spirit deal with you, because even with me with some of these things, that's listen. Sometimes I cast out imagination. Something may be said or done. And my mind, one thing my brother always tells me when we talk about things, man, he said, you need to stop assuming you don't know. You just heard something, and now you're going off your mind. Now you're trying to figure out something I don't know and you don't know. Stop trying to imagine and figure out what it is. So I'm, I'm training myself. He brings me attention. I saw, I said, I said, that's like now. Sometimes I talk to them, and they say something happened. And hear me go, I said, I should have been an investigator or reporter because my mind gets carried away sometimes I hear things. And he said, stop trying to figure out you don't know. You won't dare. Only they know. You're trying to imagine things. And I'm telling you, that's why the cast out of my thoughts in my mind. Because my mind want to go everywhere sometimes. I hear something. Even sometimes I'm studying. Then I want to go here, there, and everywhere. <laughs> so what I'm saying, even when it comes to me, I ask God, bring in my wondering mind. Sometimes my mind. But what I'm saying is we are talking about here. We got to realize our heart, what's in our heart affects our mind. And that's why I said we think about it long. That's why we got to put the word of God. So we see here 
when we were doing the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit, that we need to realize that that is a good scripture to line up with Proverbs 6. Because no matter what we are doing in the work of the flesh, we're acting out somewhere over here in Proverbs. Whether something we're saying, where we're going, what we're seeing. Um, and that's why the word of God tells us we need to control what we see. We need to guard our openings. We need to guard our ear gates, our eyes, our mouth, our interest, any interest in our body. We need to uh, control by the word of God. Because what happens is it causes us to um, be, become naughty. It causes us to become wicked. That's why no matter what we see on TV, no matter what somebody say to us or what we hear, that's how the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, what we see in our eyes, and then we... Um, by seeing our eyes that cause our fat flesh to want to operate. And it's not always sexual sin. Sometimes it could be lust and cause we see some food. We want a new car, a new house. We want a new outfit. We want to wear a new style, a new jewelry. And sometimes individuals, are the, it's nothing wrong with having money. A lot of times people tell me the love of money is the root of all evil. The love of it, but we need the money. And sometimes individuals want money, money on money. And don't want to give it to nobody, help nobody, bless nobody. They just want to see that I got thousands, thousands, millions of dollars. I'm looking at I got so much money. It's going to be like the man that had many bonds and wanted more bonds. It's like, well, what you need more bonds for? You got enough. It's going to be like never could get enough. And when we die, check out of here. Somebody will say, I'm not glad they're gone. But hey, I got money that, like I said, come and eat. And then buy, come and get a house and then pay for it. Have vehicles, have millions and millions, and that's how some people are millionaires today. They want no money they earn on their own. Somebody had all that money, material possession, and I'm not, I'm not speaking against having material possession because there's nothing wrong with it, but just make sure we don't make a God out, put above God. That's what I'm saying. I know God blesses people. I'm not talking against heaven. I'm just saying about heaven and putting and making a God before God and not blessing of the individual. God said the poor people is always, but he um, left us here those that he's blessed, the abundance that he's blessed in any kind of way, we are here to stir up a gift, even to use our spiritual gifts. You got some individual may not have the material possession, some individual may not have the finances, may not live in some neighborhoods like some people live in. Um, it could be just like um, the um, gay individual in the world, how he was dressed fabulously, and then you had the poor individual that wasn't dressed so nice and how they gave him the high seat, not the litter in them, just saying what the word says, gave him a high seat and then the man the man of Viola Raymond and wasn't that probably pleasing and um into their sight, like you can sit under my feet on the stool, some of them were over there. But guess what he had? He had more than the man that had more dressed fabulously. He had great faith. So what I'm saying is this, just think about John the Baptist. How he was eight locals. <laughs> and dressed in camel hair. So what I'm saying is, he might have been a, not looking stuff, but hey, he baptized the Lord and Savior Redeemer, Jesus Christ himself. So hey, he did even a greater works, no matter, even those that may fare substantially may have all the material possession, all the knowledge. So what I'm saying, even with Mary, um, God chose her above all women to, to conceive and bear above Jesus. So what I'm saying, even you and I, that's enough to give God. I ain't always dressed like this all my life. I know what it is to, to live with um, clothes day after day, like people said, run over shoes, not the best of shoes, not the best of clothes, not them in the best of homes. And I said to myself, when I think back, people said, I look back and think of my life over. And tell me, when they think of the goodness of the Lord, all, he done that, my soul cries a hallelujah. When I cry, hallelujah, thank you, I know what he done for me. We haven't always had inside running water. We haven't always had automatic washers and electric lights. I know I'm not at old, but I know how to be raised like that. So what I'm saying is that, um, so now, just because God, I was still blessed then. <laughs> I still had some clothes to wear, somewhere to stay, and some food to eat. You got people today that are still hungry, that have nowhere to go, nowhere to stay. And we never had to live out on the streets. And we always had food. It may not be all of what we want, but we still ate. And, and we, my mom and dad, they did. I said my mom, but my mom and my dad, because you can't separate one from the other, took the father and the mother, but we be here today. But I'm just saying, um, and other and other individuals, other families in the community, people in my jobs in our church, help take care of us and help make sure we had needs. 
And um, and I would admit, it just it wasn't only our race of people, all race of people. So we wasn't raised to be racist. We was raised that people are human beings. And um, so um, for whatever reason, individuals deal with that today. I pray that we will see God as a God of love. He said, for he so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoso believe him should not perish. For he sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but the world that may be saved. So God sent his son to seek and to save all of us that are lost, no matter what culture we're in, what ethnicity or race we're in, our upbringing, or how much knowledge or education, whatever we may have, we need to realize God's a God of love, and he wants to love you one another. And if we find ourselves um, acting out like this here, now this is a dangerous individual, we need to be born again of the Spirit of God. If we are born of the Spirit of God, we need to let the Holy Spirit have his perfect work in us that we will what? crucify and sanctify our flesh to our obedience to the Word of God, that we live a life that's pleasing to God because um, he's going to ready to prepare a prayer, prayer place for prepared people. But if we are operating, we need to take, I love the Proverbs. Just take a day, like I said, read Proverbs, a book of wisdom, um, very blessed. But I just want to encourage you to stir you up within because I know I've been guilty as charging myself, even as being a believer and feel the Spirit of God. That, that's why I say I need a detox. A lot of times we need to detox our bodies that be more healthy, the physical body, and to um, lose weight and all that. But what about detoxing ourselves of this simple nature that we have been crucified and sanctified through by the Word of God, that we can be whole soul, body, spirit, that we can be the holy and righteous image of God. Then our light will shine, therefore it's a bright light. And he said, but let our light so shine before me that you see our good works that you glorify our Father which are in heaven. And that means when we did toss our way of the simple nature and walk in obedience to God's word. And then these characteristics that we see here in Proverbs, we can, I don't know about you, we can check them off. And then when they try to rise up against us, that's why we need the Holy Spirit. That's why we need the word of God. And that's why we need each other, that we be accountable to each other. We know we are our brothers and sisters keeper. That we'll be accountable that when we see our brothers and sisters, um, we should love each other enough. That when we start acting out according to the works of the flesh and not the fruit of the spirit, we should love each other enough. That's what the rest said. Confess our false one to you another. Pray you for one another. We may be healed. We may be whole. Because we don't want to be like verse 15, realizing that it's going to happen. Um, it's going to happen. God's going to chastise those he loves. But we too, just think about it. How many souls we can minister and witness to when we detox ourselves? of the characteristics in our lives is not pleasing to God. And I'm still detoxing with the help of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Look, I see, I even bounce off of my sister and prayer warriors and individuals and family and other individuals because they know my life. They know my walk. We've been raised together. We live together. We know each other. But um, nobody know me or you like God do. I don't even know myself as good as God do. So now God is, is revealing me to me. Me. So, um, if I'm not aligned in God's word because the Holy Spirit, then the Holy Spirit will convict me and the Holy Spirit will bring scripture to me. Because a lot of time I minister the word of God. Whenever I minister the word of God, I'm first partake because it starts with me first. And I'm like, okay, God, I don't know how you're going to work this today, but we're going forth in Jesus' name. And it's just to encourage you. And to be encouraged it doesn't mean that you're not saved. It just means that we need to crucify our flesh through the word of God. We just need to obey what God say. If God said love, we should love. If he said forgive, we should forgive. If he said to help, we should help. Whatever he tell us to do. If he tell us to speak his word uh, through our leading of the Holy Spirit, and it's a convicting moment for a believer, that's what the word of God is for. I tell you, I come on and minister. Like now I'm going to go out to worship, and I got to worship. All that minister, sometimes I go here worship, and God is speaking through me through the vessel. Not only through my me ministry, but through me here in other ministries. And I hear the Lord say, get your house in order, like I shared you about the prophet at that time. Um, although being advanced, although him being a prophet, more spiritual growing and the prophetic I was, he just spoke what the Lord was saying to me, not to belittle to judge me, but saying, get your house in order. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Look, I know that was spirit. I didn't have to say, well, what you talking about? I didn't get up and upset. I just already knew because of the Holy Spirit. So what I'm saying is, um, never be afraid. Cause I used to be like that. Um, sometimes, um, I love the, the prophetic and deliverance ministry, but sometimes that I would go through, the, I used to go through a service, and you know how they looking around, it ain't like today in some churches, I'm not judging church, I'm just saying, sometimes in some fellowship and worship service, uh, individuals, they weren't so, people may say so cultured, loving, and kind, they just call you out, 
They just call you out and on the mic and they just say what they're saying to you and telling everything and you know da 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 and all that and it be true. So sometimes it's truth and sometimes you got false prophets, sometimes you got true prophets. But only God knows but no prophets is true. Some things are prophets in my life, but they're not no true prophets until they come to pass. It doesn't mean it's not true, it just hasn't manifested yet. So what I'm saying is, um, I wouldn't want to be called out and I wouldn't just go up in line. And then I got to the point that if I felt like I that prayer I want to hear the breath of God, I, but that comes from growing spiritually. <laughs> and in the beginning, I just want to run into line, but I just like being in the midst. But then, then they call you out like God called Jesus out of where I where I thought. God already knew where he was. He just called him out. And I used to raise with even um and some service the service I go to now sometimes. They just call people out and just say what thus said the Lord and the word of God and da 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 and, and um but people seem to be receptive and worship and praising God or or they could be like I was in time past when I was growing and going. I just smile like thank you, Lord, hallelujah. I'm like, oh my God, Jesus. I'm still smiling. You know how people say don't bring attention to yourself and I'm just smiling, but I tell you one thing. The Holy Spirit deep inside is if I had to work on me, I tell you that you I'm still smiling and praising God, but I know God is speaking to me. So that's what I'm saying. Don't forsake the sin of yourself it is to come together as a son to be edified and build one another, to be edified and build yourself. And that's a trick of the enemy of our flesh or other individuals that feel like that we should never assemble ourselves together. Yes, we have social media. Some individuals have social media, but still or conference lines or Zoom. But we still even uh, when we come together, um, the individuals on these um, social media outlets, we have family and friends that because we will learn how to grow some spiritual material, then we can come together. So we can't use the excuse that my pastor, my bishop, my apostle is online. It, it begin training and ministry that way good. But what are we doing in our homes with our family? What are we doing in our communities? What are we doing in our jobs? What are we doing when we go to the hospital? I tell you, I was just out yesterday walking the dog, and I had opportunity to minister to two individuals. One lady, um, I, she tell them about her outcome that she'd been diagnosed with um, bone cancer. Then another lady was out to minister to her. Uh, so I ministered to that young lady just walking the dog, and the dog busting. He barking. He ready to come in. <laughs> and then I was talking to another mother. Her son had passed, and I was ministering, talking to her. So what I'm saying is, I don't have to be at church. I don't have to be on social media. I just go to the store. I just walk the dog. So what I'm saying, get out of the house. If you don't do but sit on the porch and get some of this fresh air sometime in a nice evening, and your neighbors come by, wave at them and smile and talk to them. Just, just be intentional in your witness. Be intentional. Make a conversation. And it's like now I'm going out to worship, and I'm going to the store afterwards, and you know if I get back, and service and to the store and back, I'm gonna be able to talk to somebody again because I'm gonna make conversation. And or they make conversation with me. So this was about. You don't have to always be uh, reading Genesis Revelation. Talk to somebody. This is a nice, beautiful day. And you know, you have a blessed evening or say something. Smile to someone. And you'll find your spirit being uplifted. So it gives me great joy that um God has allowed me an opportunity to come on social media to use my gift. Um for the time we're in there, whether I go other places and use my gift or not, um, in other locations and other ministries, we need to see ministry as us being the church. So that means that since we're the church, when we go, we should see ourselves as being a mobile altar. We see, should see ourselves if it means a prayer. We need to see ourselves as being a mobile intercessor, not just when we're at home, when we're in church. Meaning that we shouldn't be ashamed if we're out like in the community. Sometimes people pray. I say, okay, we're going to pray on that right now. We're praying. Just like yesterday. Minister to the mother of her son that passed. Minister to the mother where she been diagnosed with bone cancer and, and the knee and have to have surgery. Um, so it's more so many needs that need to be done. Seeing individuals being evicted, the stuff is out in the parking lot, and, and, and you know people are homelessness and people you see that are uh, distraught, they're going through a stage of anxiety and depression. You can discern even some individuals walking around the spirit of death on them. They need to be ministered to. It's not that they may not be a believer. They may not be a believer. They may be a believer. But still, we need encouraging one another. So whatever the case may be. Brothers and sisters, love to life. Thank you for coming on. Continue to pray for me. I pray for you that had worship today. I pray you enjoyed service today. And pray those you may be going out as I am or um, maybe just coming in from another service. Because it's not like in time when I first came up, everybody had service at 11. Now people had service at 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 1, 2. You had 2, 3, 4 service sometime one day at a church. But um, I'm going out now um, to service, and I, I said I may not, I didn't get, I wouldn't get there before the beginning of the service. But I know for the time I leave out now, 
as long as I get on to preach word of God, and I'm going to still have some worship and praise. And um, still, just to be the sin of my brothers and sisters, that I may be renewed, that I may be empowered. Because you minister, you give out, you need to be receiving as well. So that's why I'm encouraging you. Know, so my brothers and sisters, may y'all be blessed of the Lord. And thank you again. All right, so Holy Father God, we thank you for the word of God, the people of God, and the Lord of God on this day. I thank you, God, for my brothers and sisters. What are the petitions they have before you on today, God, that you are grant according to your word and according to your will. But I thank you for the word of God today that now this is a dangerous individual, that we, especially as born-again believers of God, we thank you for the dwelling power of the Holy Spirit to sanctify and crucify our flesh, that we be nothing but the righteous of you, that we have the pure heart that you were crowned to see. You said that uh, on the pure heart shall see God. And only we know, God, that unless we're living a life of hopes and righteous obedience to you, God, we cannot even understand the word of God. We cannot even obey your word. You said, God, obedience is better than sacrifice. So we thank you, God. We know, God, we ask you, Lord God, to know our eyes, our ears, our mouth, our hearts, our hands, our feet, our entire being, even our minds, God, that as you sanctify us through by the preach word today, you said faith come out here and hearing by the word of God, that we are made whole soul, body, and spirit that we may go forth and bear fruits of righteousness here in the earth, to bring glory unto you, that we can go and declare the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that men, boys, and girls, are proud of what must I do to be saved, and they will believe in the gospel and feel the power of the Holy Spirit. Then they too will be empowered and able to go out and bear fruits here in the earth, that only you will be glorified and magnified, for that it be added to the kingdom of God, that when you return back, God, one day you can you, you hear you say, well done, my good and faithful servant that you will be pleased in what you're doing. As you said, Jesus himself was your beloved son, that you will be pleased. And we want to hear you say the same as well, even before we see you face to face. But while we're here in this earth, remember, we continue living in the world, but we be not of this world, because we are not of this earth, world. We are from the heavens, seated in the high place with you, and the right hand of the Father, in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Love you like thank you, my brothers and sisters, for coming on today. May God forever bless you in Jesus Christ's name and you be blessed of the Lord.